on that. I want to ride the subway. I'm sorry. I just want to ride the subway. That's assault. That's assault. No, no, no. It's illegal to ride in between it's the trains. It's illegal for you to assault me. It's illegal. It's illegal for you to assault me, sir. Why are you ignoring the rescue workers, sir? Police officers are dying, and you're not one to give them benefits. You don't want to take care of them, and it's, and it's really sad, sir. My friend's a police officer, Craig Whitmer, police precinct one. He's dying because of the EPA's lies, sir, and he's getting no help from the government, no help from, from the unemployment agency, and he's dying right now because of the lie from the EPA and the government on 9-11. Why hasn't the government helped the ill rescue workers, the first responders who gave their lives on 9-11, sir? We love this country. We should treat our police officers, our fire department, our first responders with respect, sir. They're getting no respect from you for what you're doing to them, sir. Did you lose somebody on 9-11, sir? Because I know a lot of people that did. I know a lot of people that did. And they're so angry at what you did, sir. Sorry, I didn't do nothing illegal, come on. All right, what is it that you're trying to accomplish here? The fact right. that police officers, you know first responders are dying, and he's not giving them any help. Mr. Bloomberg, please, man. The first responders are dying. They demand justice. I'm doing it for you. My friend's a cop. He's dying, and Bloomberg doesn't want to give him any help. I want to ask, ask some questions. He's not he's doing not, any good. Well, why don't you make an appointment? Go online. He doesn't. He, he doesn't approve. Listen, I did you. before. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. And the media won't answer these questions. How come he's not helping the first responders? He's not. So you're saying it's up to him? Yes, he has the right. He, he, he vetoes bills to help the first responders. He did it on record, man. He doesn't care about the cops. He's, he, he's a rich guy. And that's what we're trying to show. The media won't ask him those yeah, questions, I, man. I have to agree with you on that. Look at your 9-11, guys. They're trying to kill all of us. It's not just them. Trying to kill all of this, man. In New York City, wherever you go, it's very hard not to see a roadblock, a checkpoint by the NYPD. They have huge signs. They literally stop off a whole block. They cut off a whole block. There's police all over the block. But whichever car comes, they decide whichever one they're going to stop, they're going to inspect, and they're going to check out. They look in your car illegally. And this is everywhere you go in New York City. Right after the London bombings, New York City implemented bag searches in public city uh, subway stations. So wherever you go on the subway, randomly, there's police officers there who are going to stop you before you come in. And they're going to ask you if they could search you. Roadblocks if you're in a car. If you're in a subway, they have these subway searches. Critical mass is simple movements where they just ride bikes. The police department have deemed them terrorists and are actually arresting people for riding their bikes in the street legally. A police officer just hound them down, throw them down to the floor, they handcuff them, they take away their bikes, they throw them to jail. For what? Riding your bike? Without 9 11, there would be no checkpoints. Without 9 11, we wouldn't be called terrorists. Why would these terrorism apparatuses be used against average citizens, Americans? Without 9-11, this would have never happened. They would have never gotten away with any of this, with any of these police state institutions, without 9-11, without supposedly going after Osama bin Laden, which is still free. This is what the mainstream media is ignoring. They're ignoring the facts. They're ignoring the sources. They're ignoring the people who lived through it. They're ignoring all the people who are questioning the official story with facts, with science, with first-hand personal accounts. And they will keep ignoring it because they won't let this truth come out. Because as soon as this truth comes out, everything they did to justify their actions as of 9-11 is going to be down the hole. My name is Kevin McPadden. I was a first responder on 9-11 and I'm a prior Air Force medic. He was there. He was there when Building 7 came down and he clearly hears a countdown of the building being demolitioned. On the first day on 9-11, uh, was staged north of Building 7. Amy Goodman was out in the, in, in the intersection part. Uh, World Trade Center Building 7, your opinion? Um, no. I think it needs to be further investigated. 
they had half of us separate into search and rescue and half of us into medical assistance. When we saw the, the firemen pick up and start grabbing their equipment and bustling back and forth, you know, they were getting ready to do something, we started asking questions. And so we had our eyes on this Red Cross representative that was holding a radio. So, you know, usually the person who's holding the radio has answers. Well, what's going on? What's going on? Well, what are the firemen running around for? Like, there's something going on. And next thing you know, there's firemen grabbing all their equipment and there was a whole bustle and shuffle of firemen going on. He goes over, he talks to the firemen, he comes back with his hand covered over the radio. And he's like, you know, just sit tight, just sit tight. Calm down, it's calm down, you know, it's all right. He finally has his face that is like he was heartbroken. He's like, just run for your life. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building, it'll be coming down soon. Rescue workers push people away from the scene. We are walking back to the building, it's about to blow up. He takes his hand off and you hear three, two, one, and it was boom, 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 boom. I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Richard Gage is an amazing individual. He studied architects for engineers for Not Eleven Truth. My name is Richard Gage. And I'm an architect, and I've started the Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. I've been an architect for 20 years and uh, worked in most types of building construction uh, from residential, commercial, uh, office, retail, uh, y you name it. If somebody in our government was responsible for these demolitions, then everybody in America needs to know about it. What we have to get down to is the science. Once you get to the science, it's indisputable. At Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper, not hit by an airplane on 9-11, it fell symmetrically, smoothly, at virtually free fall speed into its own footprint. A perfect controlled demolition. There's only graphic evidence for two or three fires in that building, 5th and 12th and maybe 13th floor. The official story tells us that the steel was softened, but if that was the case and this building fell due to fires, fires by their nature creep from place to place, leaving one area cool and burning another area, that would force an asymmetrical collapse. Uh, the building would tip over. So for the first time in history, fires have done what uh, only a handful of demolition companies are capable of doing. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just Pancakes. Well, just before 5.30 this afternoon, it too crumbled, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. The firemen had pulled out all of their resources from the building early in the afternoon, and they're looking at each other wondering why they're not fighting the fire. And uh, there's some people who are telling them the building's going to come down. At World Trade Center 1 and 2, we have the onset of destruction at the point of the jetliner impacts because we're being led to believe that this was produced by fire. So what we have, instead of a classical controlled demolition of an implosion, we have an explosion where beams and columns are dismembered from each other. These are welded moment frame connections in the core structure of the World Trade Center 1 and 2. Two towers, a huge explosion. They're blown up to 500 feet laterally, impaling themselves in the surrounding windows. Go, go! Nearby hotels were evacuated as it became clear that the North Tower would collapse. And within minutes, there was another huge blast. Oh my God, there it goes! Eyewitness accounts of explosions and flashes of light prior to the onset of collapse are key 
We really never even got to uh, cl close that close to the building. The closure blew and it, it knocked everybody over. Well, it, w it wasn't too bad until we got down to about the fourth or fifth floor, but it was slow going the whole way, and it was a little smoky, and, but it wasn't, wasn't bad. But then when we got down to about three, we heard like another explosion. I don't know what, what, what that was. The courtyard was all, was all uh, blown up in fire, and we had to go down through the mall. There was an explosion. We're on the support floor, which is a basement. A uh, guy came in running. All his skin was out of his body. Oh my God. All his skin was out of his body. We took him out. We, run, we ran out. We heard a, a lot of rumbling. I went back in. There was uh, a lot of smoke. We went up by the stairs with the uh, Puerto Rico police to uh, start rescuing people. A lot of people were coming out. Uh, but there was a lot of people that stayed there.